Okay, hi everyone. So this is the second part of our exercise one tutorial. And here, we're gonna show how we can go from this kind of <laughs> terrible looking, um, gray, weird, shadowy thing to, um, you know, something that looks a little bit nicer and is more recognizable as, as an animation. Okay, so we've done all the hard stuff, you know, we've, we've done the animation, we've got our objects in, um, they're, you know, your objects might look quite different by now. What I'm going to show you is how to add colors, how to add textures, um, and how to add lights. Because that's, it's, to make something look good in 3D, actually, a lot of the good lookingness is the lighting. You know, if, for those of you who have done um, photography, um, especially, you know, uh, anything indoors, still life photography, where you can control the lights, you know, the lighting is everything. It, it really gives the objects their sense of form. And you can see here how my, um, my bugs look much more three-dimensional than, um, than the bugs here. These bugs kind of look flat and, and weird. Um, so, all right. So this is um, a very, very basic introduction to adding materials and textures. Okay, so I'll press space to stop it. Now, first thing I need to do I want to make these spheres also shade smooth. So I'll just right cl click on them and make them shade smooth. And now these bugs, maybe like your 3D models, they've got a default texture on them, which is actually, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's, it's the texture that the museum put on them. It's, it's the real 3D scanned bugness of them. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't want that. Um, if I go into rendered pr material preview, you can probably see it better. It's pretty great. But, um, you know, I, I want this like more artificial look. So I'm actually going to delete this um, photographic texture that it came with. So I'll just go back to kind of nothingness like that. Okay, so, you know, what colors do we make it? So to, to give something a color, if I, I'll start with um, maybe the ground object here. We go into the materials tab that's down here. So every, every 3D object in an animation, by default, it'll just be this kind of whitish gray color. But to give it a... A, a color and a surface, you know, everything from this shiny metal to this sort of kind of shiny plastic, plasticky tabletop sort of material, um, it's, it's in the materials tab. So we'll just do a, a very simple sort of approach. Um, today I'm going to click new material and by default it uses this thing called the principled BDSF texture, which we'll probably use that for, you know, most of our work because it, it's really kind of can do incredible an incredible range of things. But for now, I'm just going to click in the base color, and I can just grab any color here, and well, hey, it has color. If yours doesn't have color, it's just that you're in the wrong viewing mode. You know, if I go back to the solid mode here, no color, the rendered preview mode and the render mode both show you um, the color. Now, the rendered preview, it just has a default lighting setup. Um, that gives us an idea of what it'll look like, but the rendered mode is actually a lot closer to what what our thing will look like, and we're going to change our lights as well to make things look better. Now, you know, here we have the question of what color to choose, and there's a really nice shortcut that um, I found on a bunch of um, YouTube tutorials for this that I, I quite like. Um, you know, Adobe has this website, um, color.adobe.com. It's pretty amazing, you know. Um, if you go to this website here, and um, I don't know, where do I start? Explore, maybe? It's got all these color schemes. And um, the cool thing about them is if you click on any of them, it'll give you uh, what's called a hex code. And these codes, if I just click copy, and I go into here, I can copy it straight in. So I need to set the color mode to hex, but if I just grab that, press delete, and press paste, and then enter, I've got that exact, um, that exact color. So one kind of fun thing with this website is you can help it, you can help it, you can use it to come up with the color, color scheme ideas. Um, so I think I put in like, I don't know, what happens if I put in insect? I have no idea what, you know, what these search terms are like. Who knows what we're going to get. You know, these color, it, it just gives you a whole bunch of color swatches. Um, but I, maybe I'll put in calm. Like, it's an oddly satisfying video, has that calm color palette. So I'll look at a calm palette. So maybe this one, 
that looks fine. You can spend a lot more time choosing your colors, obviously, but I'll just go with this one. So, uh, okay, I'm going to put this blue, I'll make this the ground. So I'll copy it and um, pop it in the... Now, I could just pop it in the base color, but I'm going to do a few more little tricks just for fun. I'm going to actually put this back to white. And in hex, I just put six Fs, and that'll put us back to white. But I'm going to put it in what's called the subsurface color. And that is just a really quick way to get a kind of a nice interesting plasticky look. Now, even though I'm in rendered mode, we can see nothing happened. Where did that color go? Well, um, that color is actually, I need to turn up the subsurface. So the higher I turn that, the more of it we'll see. And what subsurface is, you know, I might send a tutorial out on this. Basically, it's the light is passing through the white, hitting the blue, and then bouncing out. And this number here is telling us how much of it passes through and how much of it bounces. But it just creates some of the kind of interesting plasticky um, uh, lighting settings here in a very kind of quick and easy way. Um, to get it to look its best, you might have to put in, I don't know if you need screen space, reflection. Sometimes some of these things you just have to put in. So I'm going to tick screen space reflections and also Click this one here, Ambient Occlusion. We're going to come back to that in a second. Okay, so I've given that blue color here. Um, I'll sh I should do something to my spheres here. Now, what other colors do we have? Maybe the spheres will be another blue. Maybe they'll be a dark blue. That could be nice. So go back to Blender. Um, now I'll have to make a new material. And I, I might I'll give this a name because I'm going to use it more than once. Um, and I'll do the same thing. I'll leave the base color white and I'm going to put it in the subsurface. And, and I'm going to put the subsurface up to maybe 0.8. Oh, that didn't work. I must have done a typo. 0.8. There we go. And so you can see it's kind of got that nice, like, semi see through y plastic -y look to it. Um, uh, now I'm going to make it roughness. If I turn its roughness down, it'll make it kind of shiny. If I put that to 0.1, oops, I'm on the ground, so that made the ground shiny. If I put this roughness to 0.1, you can see it's made it kind of shiny. But we can see what kind of doesn't look good is these really sharp edges here. Um, sharp edges always kind of look like they're made by a computer. You know, nothing in the world has purely sharp edges. So usually we soften these edges a little bit. So I'm just going to put a bevel modifier on this and make that amount much less. Maybe I'll make it 0.02. That'll do. It's just kind of softened it a little bit and made it look a little bit more sort of plausible. Um, they're kind of a bit high up, actually. They're higher off my ground than I realized. If I go here, yeah, I wanted them low. That's not cool. So I'll grab all of them. I can use my outliner and grab all four of them. And I'm just going to press G for grab and Z and I'll drop them down because I want to I want them to look like they're sort of spinning on the ground. Now I think I also want to move them back a bit. I want them higher up in the space. So it's kind of moving them that way. So I'll be G for grab and Y and I'll shift them up. That looks better. That's kind of nice. So I said before that I want to use this um, dark blue material on all of these um, icospheres. So Remember that I, I named it here, I called it Sphere. So then I can just go to the other ones and um, click on here. Instead of creating a new one, click on the world and just click Sphere. Um, and to this one, Sphere. And to this one, Sphere. And you can see in our camera preview, if I press play again, great. They've got that, um, that blue texture on now. That's cool. OK, so uh, let's just keep going. What other colors do we have? Maybe I'll make the, um, so I've used this one and this one. Maybe I'll make the bugs, I think in mine, I made the bugs black. I kind of like it. It looks a little bit more mysterious. So I'm going to use that trick again. Um, I'll make a new material. And I'm going to just <laughs> keep using the exact same trick of the subsurface scattering, just because yeah, maybe I'm being a bit lazy, but um, so I just uh, 
had the base color at white, the subsurface at black, and I set the subsurface scattering quite high so it's made them quite dark, but they've got that kind of nice weird plasticky look. I'll show you, if I just made the base color black normally, um, and I didn't use any subsurface scattering, it, you see it's, it's a lot flatter, it doesn't give you that nice weird plastic look. So um, yeah, I'm just going to fix that up again and um, put that back to 0.9. And yeah, I just like it. It, it just looks kind of cool. It, it adds in all those weird extra colors and stuff. And we might talk about you know how exactly this works later on, but it's just kind of letting you know that there are all these pathways to making your, making your work look more visually interesting. Okay, so let's just continue on. Um, if you look in my original video, I've got these really shiny colors, these shiny metal ones. So these work differently. So let's grab another color. Um, these ones look a little bit more plausible as metal, so maybe I'll make uh, this one the ring. Um, I'll make a new material, and I'll put. I have to use the base color now because we don't have subsurface scattering on metal so much, as far as I know. Um, but now I go to this tab here that says metallic, and I turn that to one. Now you can see it's gone shiny already, and I'll turn its roughness down to 0.1 again. So it's got that kind of shiny metal look, but it's not going to have that like those cool reflections that are in mine. And you can see on mine, it's actually like you can see there's almost a world back there. There's some trees, and that's because when we have shiny metal materials, you know what metal is really doing? It's just reflecting the world around us. So we're going to use an image in the background to kind of give that, give the metal something to reflect. So um, um, let's put that in now. So there's two ways to light a scene and um, what we're going to do is we're going to use what's called an environment light and we're going to use some um, regular lights that are like spotlights. Okay, so in the world tab here, I'm going to go in the color, um, I'm going to click on this yellow dot and I'm going to say environment texture and now it's gone pink. And when it goes pink, it's usually Blender saying <laughs> something's missing. And here what's missing is that I've said look for an image in the background, but we don't have an image. So I've got one downloaded, but I'll show you where to grab them. There's this great website called HDRI Haven. Uh, it's here. And HDRIs are basically, um, they are, they're these kind of 3D, 360 degree photographs and you use them in the background of, um, of 3D renders and they actually create your lighting by using lighting from the real world. It's what's called physically based rendering. It's um, quite a standard these days and it's an amazing trick and it makes life a lot easier to get kind of, you know, a nice lighting effect like this without having to do too much work. Okay, so I've already downloaded one, so you know, find one you like and download it. Once you've got it downloaded, you just have to connect it here. So I'm going to go open. And remember, where did I, I think I stored it here in the Winter Forest folder. It was the JPEG here. I'll open it. And okay, there you can see there's that image. And I'm going to hide it because I, you know, it's not visible here because my camera's looking down at the ground. But I can, you know, if I rotated my camera, I'd actually see it in the render. And I don't want that. So I'm just going to go into the, um, uh, the render properties tab, go down to this bit that says film and click transparent. So now it's still creating all my reflections, um, but uh, I, I don't see it. So that's cool. You know, now that's working for the metal. Um, and I think I'm going to make one more, one of the balls metal. Um, what did I do in my original? I made, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll have the ball that's rolling towards us be metal again. So I'll get this ball and I'll um, go down to the material tab, add a new material and um, I'll get that other, what's another color? Oh no, <laughs> I closed that um, color scheme. What a dummy. Can I get, can I get it back? Oh, that's annoying. Yes, okay, it's this one. That's quite funny. All right, so I've got the, I think I used that one for the ring. Why don't I make a, blah, 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 blah. maybe I'll put this one on the ball, see what it looks like. It might be too dark, but let's just see. Base color. 
set the metallic to 1 and set the roughness to 0.1. That looks okay. Um, again, make your projects better than mine. <laughs> That'll be great. You know, I'm doing this kind of quickly. Okay, so now uh, what's one of the colors I haven't used? Um, this kind of pale blue. So I'll grab that and I'll put that on the last remaining ball. Um, and I guess I could make it metallic as well. What's that going to look like if I do that? Um, set the metallic to 1 and um, the roughness to 0.1. It looks... I actually preferred it the way I had it before where kind of one of them is matte and the other one is shiny. Just gave a bit of variety. So I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to put that base color F, 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 back to white and um, put that blue there. Set the metallic back to zero. Put the subsurface to like 0.8. I'll leave it kind of shiny in that. Okay, cool. So now I'm just going to pause my animation here. And I want to show you what a render looks like. Because this is still, it's still kind of a preview here. It's not actually what the render is going to look like. So what we're going to do is we're going to go render. And we're just going to render one image. And that's what our render is going to look like. It's just done a few more calculations than is happening um, on the screen. Now, yeah, it looks OK. It doesn't look fantastic. Um, if we go back to my video, my video looks much nicer. And there's a few things we can do to kind of um, you know, uh, get it looking better. And this is another thing. You know, One of the reasons that we're going to talk in class a lot about having you know, Pinterest pages and, and reference images and artworks you like or, or whatever is that when you're in 3D, often you kind of forget. You go, oh, yeah, that looks good. But it probably doesn't. Yeah, there's probably a lot more you can do to make it better. And having a reference that you want to um, uh, sort of emulate and, and, um, and also have work uh, is, is good to push you to make things look a little bit better. OK, so there's a bunch of things. You can also see the sharp edges on these shapes. I didn't put the bevel on all the other ones. And see how that one looks kind of nice and plasticky. It looks like a dice. You kind of want to pick it up. This one looks like, it just looks like something that came out of a computer. It doesn't look cool at all. So um, yeah, let's just, um, let's sort that little problem out. So I think this is the one. Oh, if you want to zoom in on something, press the dot key whoop, on your numpad. I had the wrong thing selected. If I click here and press dot, it, it kind of zooms in. So here I put this bevel modifier on, and I set it at 0.02. So I can just do the same thing here, put on a bevel, 0 0.02. And if I zoom in on it, yep, that looks better. And there is a trick where you can copy all of these on together. But just so I don't overload you with too much stuff, I'll just, um, I'll just put all these on later. But if someone wants to ask me in class, how do I copy all of these modifiers on on uh, at once, I can show you how to do it. It's just a, another keyboard shortcut. But OK, so that's better now. We've got, if I go into the render, and a cool thing you can do with the render is you can render in another slot. And if I press, um, I'm going to press F12 is the shortcut to render. Um, you can compare your renders. So if I go back, look at the area down here, slot 1, slot 2. And if I press Alt, J, and J, I can toggle between them. And OK, look, you can see that that just looks a bit better. OK, so that's all right. Looks better. Still doesn't look as nice as this. The main issue is that there's that nice shadow on the bugs, whereas these bugs look kind of flat, not so good. So let's get that shadow in. What I did in my previous file is I, I went into a little bit more detail in the, um, in the shading here. So I'll show you what I did. So if I go into the shading tab here, what these tabs are doing, and you'll learn this throughout the course, is that they're just giving you different windows to work in. It's not changing anything in your project. It's just showing you sort of some different, um, different spaces to work in. But they're all kind of uh, pre-designed to um, uh, kind of help you out. So all right, so in the shading here, I've got this, they're kind of flat. They don't have any nice dark shadows like I've got here. 
So I'm going to add those shadows. So this is just a little trick. I'm going to add something called ambient occlusion. Now, okay, I should have said, what is this space? This space here with these nodes, it's just what's in here, but in the node editor. And usually when you're um, making a shading network, which is what this is, um, you know, you add all sorts of stuff to get much more kind of complex and beautiful effects. You don't just um, change these numbers, you can do all sorts of amazing stuff. So I'm just going to do a little bit here. I'm going to press Shift A and add in an ambient occlusion node. And I'm going to go press Shift A and add in a ramp, color ramp. And I'm going to connect this color um, uh, output to the fact and this color to the base color and it hasn't done much but if I now remember when I said here just have this ambient occlusion activated and you can see it's it's already adding in some shadows but if I grab this color ramp and I drag this one up you see it'll make the shadows go crazy and basically what it's doing is it's it's saying that you know please blender look for lots of shadows in here and when you find them um, you know, these are the colors that I want you to shift between. You can change these colors to anything. I could make this like blue or something and you could kind of have nice weird blue shadows or, you know, whatever you want. Um, but I'm just going to kind of bump that up a bit. And now I'll do another render. Where's my render tab gone? I want to go into slot three and have a look. Press F12. Okay. Kind of better. Okay, so I've got some shadows now. But the other thing that is kind of wrong with this is the lighting itself. You know, see there's no kind of, if I go back to my original, it's got all these nice shadows under here and, you know, this side is darker than this side and so on. So we're going to um, fix the lighting up as well. So if I go into the uh, animation window again, so I've got my scene here, we're going to do a very quick lighting job. We're just going to add one light. We'll get rid of the default light, which is just sitting here doing not so much. And I'm going to add in an area light. So I'm going to press Shift A and add in a light, an area light. And I'm going to scale it up. And so far, it doesn't look like it's doing very much. It's facing the wrong way. It's pointing up. So I want to rotate it to point down at my objects. Um, but it's not obviously doing a whole lot. So, first of all, to see what one light is, is doing, we kind of want to turn off every other light in the scene. So the, the main light in the scene is actually that image that we put in. It's got a strength attribute here where we can turn it up and down. And I'm going to turn it to zero. And so now you can see this area light, it's doing something. So if I go down to the lighting tab here, if I turn the power here to zero, okay, our, our scene has gone completely dark. If I turn it up to 100, okay, it's, it's, it's getting something. So let's turn it up to 1,000. Okay, now see already how we, we don't have those great reflections on the metal anymore because that was what the um, that background image was doing, the HDRI. But what we do have is this kind of more dramatic lighting. You know, we've got like a single light source and it kind of looks it looks kind of cool. It's things have a sense of three dimensionality. So I'm going to do something very simple. I'm just going to rotate this light, maybe something like that. And I'll just grab it and I don't know, do just, you know, do what you like. Um, but I just kind of want the shadows to do something kind of interesting. Um, now, what if I make it stronger? What if I make it 2000? Okay, it's not too bad. Now, um, I might actually, where is it in my scene? I might actually move it back a bit. So if I grab it on the Y axis and I do that and maybe actually want to rotate it on the X axis a little bit. So it's kind of pointing that way maybe. All right. So there's our one light. Now I'm going to bring back my HDRI because I want my reflections and I want to just have it See, if I turn it back on, you can see immediately we've got some reflections back on the metal. But also it gives kind of just a nice general light in the scene. So all I'm going to do for this lighting effect is just balance the two lights that I've got. So maybe I'll have the HDRI at like 
0.3, and maybe my um, maybe my area light is too strong. Maybe maybe I should have it 1500 or something. You know. Okay, so you know that that's that's not too bad. It's it's kind of it's definitely more interesting than it was before. Okay, so we're getting towards the end now. Peter, is there anything else you wanted to do? Uh, yeah, there were a few other things, I think. If I go back here, there's a little bit more interesting stuff happening with shadows. I think I might have even just repeated my ambient occlusion trick on um, the thing that I did with the bugs. I, um, I think I repeated that on kind of everything. I think I just grabbed this and pressed Copy, Control c and um, Control v here and just connected it up to everything to give everything kind of a... A bit of a, a bit of a bump in the shadow department. You know, this is not. There's much more kind of sophisticated ways to, um, to shade and light the scene. That was a bad idea. <laughs> Don't want to do it to the shiny metal ones, of course. That makes no sense. Um, you can see that when I did that, I'll do it again. It actually replaced the metal color and just made it this sort of shiny gray white color. We don't want that. We wanted. Um, the color of the metal. But for everything else, look, why not? Um, give it that ambient occlusion. Who knows, you might get some nice shadows with very little work. All right, so back in my animation view, it's looking kind of nice. There's one more trick I did. Let's just let's just do a render now so we have an, an idea of what, we, what we've got. I'll go back to my render window and go back to slot. I'll go to a new slot, slot four, press F12, Okay, so now if we go down, you can see where, you know, it's definitely starting to look nicer for sure. Um, there's one little trick you can do, um, and I'll ex I might explain this a bit in class. I'm going to add something called a light probe. This is a, another weird trick, but um, we might discuss in class why these light probes exist. And it's kind of, you know, in the story of computer graphics right now, this is something that exists because of what's called real-time rendering and basically where our 3d model here is kind of functioning a little bit like um, a little bit like a computer game in a way that the the rendering is being calculated um, but what I'm just doing I'm scaling this thing up and it's got all these little dots in it and these are what's called light probes and um, it just helps calculate shadows and if I go into the render tab here and I go down to uh, indirect lighting, all I'm going to do is just click bake indirect lighting. And it's going to do something, hopefully it shouldn't take too long. Um, oh, it's already done. Okay, so uh, that, was, that was pretty quick. So now if I do one more render, go into slot 5, press F12. Okay, it should have a few more shadows that weren't there before. So I'll go back to number 4. Yeah, so it's a small difference in this case, but you know it's still kind of rounded out the shadows under the ball a little bit. Um, it's it's just given some extra calculation to the lighting, especially for the ambient occlusion. Okay, so we're getting pretty close to being done. I'm just going to click Control S to save where I'm up to, and um, if I press spacebar, we can see that you know we're basically done. Um, I've got this nice, oddly satisfying video. The balls are swinging through the gap of the ring, um, the little, <laughs> little shapes are spinning around and uh, the bugs are kind of doing nothing I guess, just adding some extra weirdness. But, um, but yeah, um, you know what, I, I kind of think the composition could, what if I moved everything back a little bit, call me crazy, but um, if I grab this on the y-axis, I feel like it could be a little bit further back, um, which would mean I'd have to rotate the camera a little bit. Um, but just, it just kind of, yeah, it just looks visually nicer, I think, in my personal opinion. All right, okay, so that's my, that's, that's the work here. Now, you know, how do we export it as a video? You know, we want to go from this program that, you know, we don't want to open the program every time we want to show the video. We just want a, a video file where it um, shows us what it's doing. So there's uh, two ways to do it. A quick and easy way, which is kind of not recommended, and a slower way that um, will always give you high quality. 
So we'll do the slower way. Um, so what we have to do is we have to render out these 120 frames that we made. When we made our animation, we set the length to 120 frames, and we are going to uh, render that out. So we have to tell Blender where is it going to send all these frames. And what the frames are, I'll show you because I've already done it, um, is basically for every single frame, it makes a picture like this. And this is what's called a frame sequence. Um, and the, the benefit of rendering like this, instead of rendering straight to a video file, is that all of the hard computer work is making these images. Um, so if you've got a really complex scene and, say, Blender crashes in the middle of the render, you can just start rendering from where you were up to before. Or if you've got a really complex scene and you've got more than one computer, you, know, you could render out these ones on one computer, these ones on another computer, and these ones on an... Oops, and these ones on another computer, and then your render is all, all of a sudden three times as fast. Um, there are lots of other reasons that we render straight to frames, um, especially in terms of quality and compression. So we're going to do this. We're going to make a frame sequence and then just quickly compile that into a video. OK, so we're almost done. So we have to go into the uh, output tab here. And the first thing we have to do is, um, oh, I forgot to set my frames to 25 frames per second. Should have done that right at the beginning, but I think we'll, that shouldn't stuff up our loop. I think our loop should still be fine. Yeah, that's still fine. Okay, so my frame rate is 25 frames per second. Um, we've got 120 frames. Um, and I'm going to, I have to tell Blender where to put the frames. So that's the output here. So I would go, um, now, because we're very well organized, I, at the beginning of the video, showed I had a Blender folder and I had project files where my Blender files are. I've got video exports where my video is and I've got frames where my frames are. Now, this is the sequence I've already made. So I would just make a new folder and call it like OSV2 because it's the second time I'm doing it. And I just make sure that I'm in that folder, click accept. Um, and the file format is a PNG image. That's fine. You can leave it like that. The resolution is 1080 by 1080. Um, that's fine. You know, if you're making something that needs to be higher, you can change it or lower and so forth. Obviously, the higher this number, the slower the render, um, et cetera, et cetera. But then basically, instead of before when we were just rendering an image, which is rendering one frame, we just click Render Animation. And if I click this, you can see that it's uh, rendering one frame at a time. And you know it's a reasonably simple scene, so it's rendering quite quickly. Um, each frame looks like it's taking a little bit less than one second. And you can see that it's, it's up to almost frame 20 already. If I go into my um, uh, OSV2 thing, you'll see that these, um, these frames are also appearing in that folder. So that's cool. You know, that's that's doing what it's meant to do. Now, just in the interest of time, I'm going to stop uh, stop that render now, and I'll just use the frames that I'd made previously. So I'm just going to click the X there and cancel that render, um, and I'll use the frames from before, and I'll show you how to um, turn the frames into a video. Okay, so I'll just we can do this next step can be done in After Effects, but also you can do it in Blender. Um, I'm just going to make a new new file, general, um, but instead of using the 3D area, I'm just going to go into video editing, which is, you know, if I use this plus here, video editing, video editing, like that. Just gives me a, um, a timeline and a, and a viewer, and I'm going to bring in that frame sequence. So I'm going to press Shift A, I'm going to bring in image sequence, and um, just go to where I put it before, which was in the frames, OSV1. And I'm just going to press the letter A to grab them all, add the image strip. And all of this looks stretched just because I need to change the resolution here to the same as, um, as the frames I made, which is this square format. You know, you can make yours um, 1920 by 1080. It's, it's really up to you. I just did this square thing because it's I think these OSV things have sort of an Instagram vibe to them. Um, I'll set the frame 
length to 120. If I press play now, it looks exactly the same as what we were just working on, but this is actually now 2D. All the 3D information is gone, and it's just reading the frames. And you'll also notice that the quality is, is now with the render quality, um, and the speed is now the full speed of the video. Um, now this should also be at 25 frames per second. Okay, so now um, all we do for the output this time, um, I'm going to, instead of having it where the frames went, I'm going to have it in my video exports folder, and I'll accept that. And instead of rendering it to a PNG, I'm going to change that to uh, FFmpeg video, and I'm going to change the encoding to an MP4. And um, that's it. So now if I press um, render animation, it looks exactly the same, um, but this time it's, um, it's transforming our frames into a video. Um, and now within that, um, uh, I might just show you one more thing right at the end. So that, that will have made our video, that's all good. But what we can also do to our frames is we can kind of, kind of Photoshop them, you know, that's what kind of After Effects and, and programs like that specialize in, um, is doing effects on top of, of um, frame sequences and so on. So we can do the same here, we can do a little bit, I can add a strip modifier and I could I grab a curves modifier and um, if I you know, do this it'll kind of might make the light way, <laughs> way too punchy, but um, you know, it's, it's, you know, if you know Photoshop and the curves, the curves are just, you know, it's, it's changing the, the color and um, the RGBA profile of your image. And, you know, this is maybe too intense. If I, if I hide it, I've probably ruined it a little bit, but maybe, maybe a little bit of tweaking, not such a bad thing. Um, let's have a look. What was it before? Let's see a before and after. Yeah. You know, it's just just added a little bit of a um, little bit of punch to it. I think I can get the shadows kind of where I want them, and um, you know, bring those lights up a bit. Okay, uh, I think that's a bit too far. It's a little bit cheesy now. Okay, that looks nice. You know, if we look at what it was before, this it looks a little bit more alive. So you know, I can just render that again, render the animation, and it will um, it'll probably just right over the file that we made before. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so that's it. Um, and this, this might take you a, you know, a couple of weeks to get, and I'm sure we'll have a lot of problems along the way. Um, but I, I made this first exercise to kind of take you from start to finish to show um, that if we're using Blender to make animations, um, all of the different components that go in to making an animation. Uh, okay, so I'm going to finish this tutorial here, and um, I look forward to talking to you all in class. Okay, bye-bye.